Good morning, and welcome to another gathering of the remnant. To our virtual family members and our face-to-face -face worshipers, I bid you now to come, gather with the remnant. Let us engage our God, nourish our people, restore our faith, and equip ourselves for the work, the will, and the ways of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen? Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. <clears throat> Come go with me now to the second chapter of First Peter. The second chapter of First Peter. I'm going to give you a little time to find 1 Peter because it's not one of the favorite chapters. If you don't uh, have your Bible with you, it will be listed on the screen. 1 Peter chapter 2, starting at the 7th verse. From the King James Version, we read these words. Unto you, therefore, which believe he, or Christ, is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone, which is Christ, which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head cornerstone. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumbled at the word being disobedient whereunto also they were appointed. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light which in time past you were not a people. But you are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy before, but now have obtained mercy. So ends the reading of God's word, but never the power contained therein. Returning to the A clause of the ninth verse, we hear these words. But you are chosen, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. From this text, I ask you to consider a message entitled, Built Different. Say that with me. Built different. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, help us. Nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. Amen. Although this passage was written by Peter, it addresses one of the things that are most significant to us as a people. My favorite New Testament writer is John. And John is a little bit different than all the other gospel writers. There's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John that wrote the four Gospels, but the four Gospels are not really the same. Matthew, Mark, and Luke are the same in terms of what they look to portray and what they're trying to give out to you, but John's Gospel is a little bit different. God, John's Gospel is what is known as a maverick Gospel. It doesn't hit on the same sub consciousness of people as Matthew, Mark, and Luke. John has to be a little bit different of a person, the way he writes, the way he thinks. And so it's not that I like 
John, because he's different, I like it because I'm different. And we tend to uh, are attracted to the same kinds of things that are much like us. You see, John was different. And his perspective on Christ was different. John didn't behave like the average person. John walked around in animal skins. And, and he, had, he ate wild locusts and honey. His clothes were made of camel hair, and he used to wear this leather belt that had the head of the pig still on it. And he had sandals, and he didn't have underwear, and his hair was just a mess, and he was different. He was the kind of person that you probably would look at and go, no, I I can't deal with you. There are some people who really actually believe that the way you dress determines the person that you are. And so people can front on you by dressing a certain way to make you think that, that, that that's the way they are, but they're really not. You see, John preached in the wilderness. Now, you got to think about this. This was not a lot of people in the wilderness. In the wilderness, most people were in the city, in the suburbs of cities. But John preached in the wilderness. And so what's out in the wilderness for him to eat? Locusts, which is plentiful. And wild honey, which is plentiful. So he would eat wild honey, and he was found in the wilderness. And this combination of locust and wild honey, although in your mind, you might think that this is not something that you would eat, it actually really is a very nutritious meal. Some of us now eat chocolate-covered ants. Right? And so, but at this time... This person, John, is out in the wilderness by himself, and the way he's surviving is on eating locusts and wild honey. Both his clothes and his diet point to a strict and austere lifestyle. That means this is something that he chose to do. Now, why he chose to do this, I don't know, because Actually, John is a preacher's son or a a minister's son or a priest's son, as the text tells us. It is clear that his lifestyle choices was chosen freely. He didn't have to do that. He didn't have to go into the wilderness and speak to the wild animals and eat locusts and honey. He didn't have to clothe himself that way. It wasn't because he did it because of a lack of privilege. The same can be said about John's cousin, Jesus. Now, Jesus was the son of a carpenter. Jesus himself was a carpenter. And he would go around in all of the places in this city where artisans, construction workers, mason workers, carpenters were always in high demand. Yet, Jesus did not go along and be with all these other people. He went and got 12 people who were fishermen and makers of nets. He walked among those who were sick. He went with all of those that were in need, the marginalized, the disenfranchised. Here he is, a person that could live very wealthy, but has chosen and decided not to. Why is this? We know it's their choice, but why? Why choose to be odd? Why choose to dress different? Why choose to be different? To be something that everybody looks at and goes, "Mm, hmm, don't look like a preacher to me. Why choose to be peculiar? Well, our text this morning tells us that who was reading this text was a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation of people, a peculiar people. So what does it mean to be peculiar? 
Well, Webster's Dictionary defines the term peculiar as a characteristic of only one. Now, we've all heard the expression, uh, he's one of one. So, if something or someone is set aside for something special, or because it is distinctive, odd, curious, eccentric, or unusual. It can also mean non-conforming, non-normalized, something exempt from the ordinary, or something or someone that is peculiar or different. So what good is it for someone to be different? Most people I know who are considered different don't like the ideal of being different. They fight against the very ideal of not fitting in. They want to fit in. They want to be with their group. They want to be with they, where they are in society. They want to be, all those other ministers and pastors, they want to be like other ministers and pastors. Now, this is especially true in kids and young adults. They love being in a group. They love being a part. They love with being and having the up-to-date fashions. It comes out, the sneakers come out in March, and we're buying them on March 31st. And everybody's got the same sneaker. They seek the same types of relationships. They often speak the same language with the same accents and pronunciation, shoddy. Even though you're not from the South, you begin to talk like them and be like them because you want to be included. They want to go to the same places, do the same things the same way, at the same time as their friends, allies, or business partners. They want to drive the same car. They want to go to the same club, strip or not. Come on, somebody. Or even play the same kinds of sports. And why is this? Why do we fight not to be different? Because we don't want to be different. Being different can get you beat up, laughed at, bullied, talked about ostracized from your family, your community, and your friends. Quite frankly, being different is kind of different. God made us from scratch. He gave some of us the ability to suffer long. Have you ever noticed that some people who are constantly going through something and always suffering over it, and you know that they're suffering over it, but somehow or another they still have a smile on their face? God has given others of us the ability to persevere, to just keep fighting no matter how many times they get knocked down. They keep getting up. No matter how many times that they don't have what they need, they just keep finding a way. And they just persevere through. Still, he gave others the ability to forgive and to forget. Do you have the ability to love the unlovable? Do you? Do you have the ability to forgive the unforgivable? Do you? Well, everybody that you know and everybody that's done wrong to you, you just kind of look at them side eye. Do you have the ability to do justly, to love mercifully, and to live peacefully with your God? Can you hold a crying baby all night long? Can you feed a child with a cleft palate? Can you sing when your heart aches? Can you be still when a loved one is running rampant, stark raving mad? Some people can. Some people can't. And that's how you know you're built different. You're not built different just to be different. There's no problem with being different. You're different to do something different. Different that God has called you to do. 
John and Jesus were built different because God had to build them different so that they could do what God needed them to do. Everybody can't hang on a cross and the first words out their mouth is to forgive them for they know not what they do. You may not be able to do that so you can't be Jesus. Maybe you can't wait three days to go to your friend's house and raise him from the dead. You have to be built different. You can't do some things and Jesus needs these things done so he chooses to build people different. John and Jesus was built different. Do you know God will put you in places where you don't fit? Where you don't fit in? Where you're supposed to walk in and be different, not to blend in? These are the reasons why, God, because he needs you to do something that no one else can do. Just you. Just you and you alone. He does this so that you might go around those who know that you are his. Sometimes, don't you feel like you don't fit into the world's perspective of who you ought to be? Don't sometimes you feel like you're the only one of one? Don't you feel like sometimes when you're around all these people, you still feel alone? You still feel distant? You still feel like something's missing? Like you should be doing something out of all the people on the road that's driving and a car swerves to the side? Why is it that you are the only one that stops to see what needs help? You're not different just to be different. You're not where you are just to be where you are. You're not made just to be made. You have a purpose in life, and your life purpose is to be different from anybody else because God needs you to do what he needs you to do. And so he has to make you that way. A couple of weeks ago, John, John, John of church penetrated my heart when he brought to the surface of my consciousness my own real feelings about being inadequate. There are times that, if I could be real with you, there's times that I realize that I just don't measure up. It just doesn't seem like I'm able to do the things that I'm supposed to do. And it seems like I disappoint so many people by not doing what they want me to do. They want me to dress a certain way. They want me to talk a certain way. And, 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 and that struck me strange. I had to seriously think about it. Out of the mouths of babes comes the truth. And sometimes truth smacks us right in the face and we just push it off to the side and keep on moving forward because we think we got the answers to everything. Sometimes a little baby can change your life just by one word they say. Here, John John penetrated my heart. I had been wrestling with a few things in my life and how well I've been managing them. And I felt inadequate until John John said those words to me and I started thinking about them and I put myself in the prayer closet and I had a conversation with God and I asked God about my inadequacies that I felt, how I didn't measure up. And why did he make me this way? Why did he make me one who understands both sides of an argument? How come I just can't take one side and stick with it? And God said to me, I didn't make a mistake making you the way you are. I built you differently 
because I need you to do something different. Something that no one else on this entire planet can do but you. Now, don't get it twisted. God didn't build me different, doesn't make me special than any one of you. Because God has made us all different. So why we keep wanting to be like someone else is way beyond my comprehension. I would love to preach like my father in the ministry, Pastor Johnson who can open up a text and go for 40, 50 minutes and you still want to hear more. But I realize now that I'm built different. I would love to pastor like my father in the ministry, Pastor Braxton, who has over 3,500 members of one of the largest black churches on the north, northwest side in Seattle, pastors so many people, helps so many people, does so many different ministries, raise money for the disenfranchised and speaks on so many different platforms. But I realize that I'm built different. I would love to sing and play like Malachi who in my times when I'm here, his melodic playing kind of soothes my soul and helps me to understand that everything is going to be all right. But I can't hold a note in a dump truck because I'm built different. So there it is. There it is. It's not until you realize, recognize, accept, and know that who you are, and that you're built different, that God can pour into you his work, his will, his ways. It's not until you realize, recognize, accept, and know who you are and whose you are, and that you're built different, that Christ can bless you. It's not until you recognize, realize, and accept and know you're built different that when you will become more confident in knowing that the Holy Spirit is walking with you, talking with you, and he seeks to lead and guide you into your very own special mission to see your very own special vision of what's coming up that you might be able to bless humanity and praise divinity. So it's not different just to be different. It's different to do different. Every grain of sand on the beaches of the world are different. Every tree and every leaf on the tree is different. Every fingerprint on all five of your fingers are different. Every blade of grass is different. Every celestial star and planet and universe is different. So when people want you to think like them, behave like them, talk like them, walk like them, to be accepted by them, simply tell them, sorry, I can't do that. I'm built different. When people want you to feel a certain kind of way about how they want you to feel, just say sorry. I can't do that. I'm built different. God made you in his image. And he told us that we are wonderfully and marvelously made. He made us a little lower than the angels and a little higher than the imps in hell. 
God placed us in our mother's womb to protect us. Gave us an earthly father to discipline and love us. Brothers, sisters, family, and friends to live with us. So when people want you to think like them, behave like them, talk like them, walk like them, or be like them to be accepted by them, just say, sorry, I can't do that. I'm built different. God has given us all gifts and talents, not so that we can outshine the other, so that we can do his work, his will, and do it his way. God has given us an ability to do something that no one else in this entire world can do. He built you different. He built you for a reason. Begin to love yourself. No matter what somebody else thinks about you, you love yourself because God loves you. And we can't quite figure out what you're supposed to do. Just keep loving God. Because he made you different. Not just to be different. But to do different. God has given us all gifts and talents to do his work. To do his will. And you want me to think like you? You want me to behave like you? You want me to dress like you? You want me to care about what you care about and how you look at me? You want me to care about what you think of me? God made me different. So that I might be able to do different. And down here on this earth, the only one I'm trying to please is my maker in heaven. Because in these last days, when my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth and my feet don't hit the floor no more, that's all that matters. So that I might hear these words, welcome home, good and faithful servant. You fought a good fight. You're different, but you did what I asked you to do. And so on this day, Remnant, don't be different just to be different. Be different to do different. There's people in this world that need you. Our babies, they need you. Our young adults, they need you. Our senior adults, they need you. And if you can't do it, Don't worry about it. God has a ram in the bush. And he's trying to get that ram to do what he's called that ram to do. To be the sacrifice. You can't do it. Don't feel no guilt about it. But do what you're called to do. Because God built you that way. This has been a word of God for the people of God, for the edification of God's kingdom.